Hello, this is Haka Dabin, and I'm here with SCP-74 and 75. First off, we have SCP-74, also known as a quantum woodlouse. I have a number. SCP-74, object class, Euclid. Updated file. Where is your original? I guess we don't get that. Okay. Special container procedures. SCP-74 is contained at Site-81. SCP-74 is an active info hazard. No research in evaluating its anomalous properties is to be conducted. All personnel who have previously engaged in researching and research into SCP-74 is Anomalous properties who have a post secondary or greater education in physics or who have access Archive 74 317E must never come within 5 kilometers of SCP 74. SCP 74 is contained within a, a 6 meter by 6 meter by 3 meter reinforced glass chamber. Footnote 1. A smaller containment chamber significantly increases the probability of SCP-74 spontaneously breaching in primary containment. Filter to block all ultraviolet light and situated in, within a windowless room met, lit by um, monochromatic safe lights, which serves as secondary containment. The container in chamber is surrounded with scaffolds bearing sheets of live cultured human skin held parallel to the surfaces of the container in chamber and arranged overlapping in each other such that lateral coverage is at least 95%. Skin sheets must be a minimum of 3 mm thick and warm to 37 degrees Celsius and must be grown from samples provided by D class personnel with no less than a middle school education and no more than a high school education. All skin sheets are to be examined on a daily basis for instances of SCP-741. All instances of SCP-741 are to be exercised and incinerated. SCP-74 or is to be fed 75 of grams of flesh, a fresh shredded apple, olives, bark, and fruit, hydroponically grown to ensure lack of pollutants and foreign organisms once a day via a mechanical dispenser. In the event of a spontaneous containment breach, personnel can coerce 74 into returning to its containment by first occupying each of its set, four sets of jaws with an entire raw apple, and physically pushing SCP-74 in the desired direction, gently tapping its compound eyes with an open palm or spraying its right pair of tentacles those with a 0.5% solution of anoic acid. What? That sounds a little bit silly. SCP-74 is an anomalous organism which uses various quantum properties at a macroscopic scale, and in other ways, it modifies the standard laws of physics within its immediate vicinity. The specific nature of these modifications are to be, appear to be linked to the extent and to which humans in SCP-74's vicinity are aware of the precise details of the physical laws within which SCP-74 modifies, such as such that research to determine whether SCP-74 has a given property or capability results in SCP-74 developing or manifesting that probability or capability. Archive 74 or 317E, a full list of, of the anomalous is physical phenomenon known to be or pro, uh, or to have been associated with SCP-74 is available to personnel level 3 or higher. Personnel who access this document 
will be disqualified from working with SCP-74 for any reason coming from, coming, or for within, or for any reason coming within five kilometers of Site-81. SCP. SCP-74 has repeated manifested the ability to spontaneously materialize at locations as much as three meters outside its primary containment. This is believed to be or to be analogous to quantum tunneling. Foundation and ethnologists have tentatively identified SCP-74 as the got ending to the order or isopoda, commonly referred known as a woodlouse. Its inertial mass is approximately 1,700 kilograms, and its gravitational mass is approximately 317 grams. Its volume has been estimated at 1.7 cubic meters, approximately the size of a compact R. SV-74 is female, although it lacks typical S-pod marsupium or brood patch in which eggs are incubated. And... Uh, has an agenically, periodically, approximately 1 to 1.3 times per hour when SV-74 is loaded from ultraviolet light and approximately 29.2 times per hour when SCP-74 is exposed to unfiltered light. The global, the global alert organ at the top of, of its Opisitor, luminescence and it emits what was originally thought to be a form of non-ionizing radiation, but which has since been identified as a coherent wave packets. Personnel who properly understand the concept of wave packets are disqualified from working with SCP-74. With the probability of one of SCP's a 74 self fertilized eggs, henceforth SV-74, or what? Reifying. What? Literally becoming a thing that is spontaneously coming into existence. Instances of SCP-74-1 preferably reify and incubate within the flesh of humans with knowledge of physics. The rudimentary knowledge of physics, which even poorly e educated adult citizens of a tech Technological civilization can acquire via cultural osmosis, e.g., magics can attract or repel each other. Matter is made of items, light has a speed, appears to be sufficient. In the absence of suitable hosts, the wave packets will reify within other organisms or within inanimate objects, rather than incubating the eggs will wither and die, leaving perforations to alert to radiation damage at a microscopic scale. The wave packets appear to decay over time, as no wave packets or instances of wave packets related damage have been detected at distances greater than approximately 400 meters from SCP-74. The rate at which it successfully incubated an instance of SCP-74-1 Mature appears to be dependent on the host's exposure to ultraviolet light. Within a host exposed to an average of 30 minutes of unfiltered sunlight per day for a month, an instance of SCP 74 1 was observed to grow up from 2 milligrams to 8 kilograms at which point it was ex surgically excised and killed. Whereas within a host totally isolated from natural light for a month, the three simultaneous is is this reach sizes of an excision of only six hundred grams, six hundred eighty grams, and seven hundred ten grams. The complete developmental history and life cycle of SCP seventy four one, including how they emerge from their host and their, their size at, at emergence is not yet known. Shouldn't we try to find out? Maybe that's a little bit dangerous. Anyway, SCP-75, also known as the corrosive snail. I don't know how a snail can be corrosive. We you will find out. Uh, 
That is one odd looking snail. Anyway, item number 70, SCP 75, Object Class Euclid. Special Containment Procedures SCP 75 is contained in a 1 meter by 1 meter by 1 meter low fork corrosion resistant container, which must be contained in a secure chain chamber with equal corrosion resistance. The absolute humidity of this chamber will not exceed 1% at any time. Medicinal grade a, a desiccants must be available at all times in order to maintain this level of humidity. If the humidity of SCP-75's chamber ever exceeds 1%, all personnel are to be evacuated immediately, and the site will be locked down until the humidity is reduced to acceptable levels. All personnel who enter SCP-75's containment chamber must wear mop level for our protection, injection, and tests as well as any tests which involves an aqueous solution are strictly forbidden. If any such solution comes into contact with SCP-74, the area will be immediately locked down and flooded with desiccant until the humidity is brought back to acceptable levels. Evacuation of personnel remaining in the area is prohibited. Description SCP-75 resembles a large snail, 20 cm in length, 13 cm in width, and 15 cm in height, with a muscular foot resembling a six-fingered or clawed hand. SCP-75 is exceptionally heavy, with a mass of approximately 860 kg, a property that is not understood. Deskin is the only known means of containing SCP-75 as it will enter a dormant state when nearly completely dry. When not desiccated, SCP-75 moves at incredible speeds for its size and mass. It adopts the behavior of a predator, jumping at and entering its, its prey in highly caustic base solutions secreted from pores on its foot. These secretions are more corrosive than any substance known to terrestrial silence, to terrestrial science. If you could uh, harvest that, maybe it would actually do some more good for 682. Anyway, due to SCP 75's aggressive behavior when active, this compound cannot be harvested. No material completely resistant to its corrosive power has been found. Hmm. Addendum SCP I mean 75F attempts to harvest SCP-75 secretions must be approved and supervised by all on-site level 4 personnel. However, approval of said personnel cannot override the standard in order to not introduce any liquid solution to SCP-75, including its own secretions. A cup of SCP I mean, addendum 75G. A cover of SCP-75 secretions was successfully harvested by SCP-294. Testing is underway to determine what surfaces, if any, are immune to its erosion. Testing is underway to determine why the cup provided by SCP-294 is immune to these substances' effects. Oh boy. And that was SCP-74 and 75. Now I'll see you next time with Abel. If you like the video, please, please like the video.